from gardening to animals to extreme renovations. Welcome to homesteading at College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're talking about homesteading with multiple sclerosis. I really had a hard time deciding whether or not I wanted to do this video. Uh, it seems like I'm whining, but if it helps somebody else out there that has MS, maybe uh, it's worth doing. So here goes. Now I've had multiple sclerosis for 22 years. 1997 my father died and uh, that stressful event caused me to have my first noticeable episode about a month after dad died. Uh, then I've gone on, I worked, uh, I was the uh, director at a small college in uh, eastern Kentucky and I worked until uh, six years ago, oh excuse me, five years ago, as a college professor and as a college administrator. Now, MS is a, is a different disease for everybody that gets it. Uh, what it is, is my immune system is attacking uh, my brain tissue and my spinal column tissue. And that causes uh, misfires in the nerves and uh, it can cause uh, people to do different things. One of my first symptoms was I went blind in one eye. Uh, but only for a little while and it came back. Uh, and when I say a little while, I'm talking a couple weeks. Then uh, I uh, had problems. I couldn't use my one arm for a while. And I had that same problem with a leg. Uh, there's something called MS-related fatigue that uh, you just can't hardly get out of the bed. Your legs weigh 7,000 pounds. So, there are a lot of issues that go along with MS, can't feel your hands and feet. One of my biggest issues is uh, my legs, something called spasticity. And it causes a lot of uh, pain and muscle stiffness. Uh, I get out and stretch every morning uh, before I get out and work. I also do some other stuff uh, just to get my legs to where they want to do what I want them to. Uh, hands and hands and arms are the same way, but they they're not affected as much because they're not carrying around this 300 pound body like my legs do. Uh, losing a little weight would probably help me, but I've always been a big guy. So uh, now, to you folks that have MS, if you've got MS and you want to do this lifestyle. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is if they offer a disease-modifying drug that you can handle, take it. Okay? Uh, I couldn't tolerate the disease-modifying drugs back then. They've got a few new ones now that I'll give them a little while and see. But I don't know if I'll ever, ever go on a disease-modifying drug. But that's my MS, not yours. If you can do a disease modifying drug, it might keep you out of a wheelchair. Okay? Uh, might I get in a wheelchair? Maybe. I don't know. I'm having a lot of leg pain and uh, I started cutting up the bathroom floor. And here's a little video. Uh, oh, it's jobs like this that just really take it out of me. I'm getting too old for this crap. It's not probably not too old. It's it's something else, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but working on getting the downstairs bathroom prepared in this old farmhouse, cutting up hundred-year-old concrete has been an adventure. Okay, cutting up that floor, and I realized just how hard it was for me to do that with. Uh, my MS. Uh, if I overdo, 
I wind up unable to do. So for this bathroom floor, I cut up with a jackhammer. I cut it up. Something that should have taken me uh, years ago would have taken me a day. Well, it took me three to get that old hundred-year-old concrete busted up and then dug out to put in the plumbing. I want to put a downstairs bathroom in this old hundred-year-old farmhouse because who knows how long I can be able to get up and down those stairs. Me and Crystal ain't getting no younger, so we need a downstairs bathroom. So I was uh, doing that, and it took me three days to get that all jackhammered up and cut out, and the pipe just laid in there. The pipe is, was close, but I still had to do some adjusting. But after three days, I had to stop, and it had to take four days off. I was not able to continue doing that. I could come out and do a couple things early in the morning, uh, but by 9 o'clock, I was just so dead tired, I couldn't hardly wiggle. So wound up sitting around a lot and taking extra medication for the leg pain and the low back pain. Uh, so I was four days there that I was on minimum duty. Then I come back and uh, I, it takes me two days, one to put, to put all the pipe together and cut a hole through my foundation and get into the basement and then put gravel around all the pipe and then pour concrete back in its place. Took me two days to do that, so I'm not young, but it's not about my age. I'm only 56, so it's about something else. So you have to learn about your disease and how you process what you're doing. You have to learn. I knew that I was going to pay for doing that. It just was just going to happen. Uh, one of my biggest issues is when it gets above 85 degrees outside, I can't be out in that. If I'm out in that, it ruins my entire week. If I stay in the field working and it's 85 degrees, I wind up to where I can't do nothing for a week. Uh, because the heat related fatigue from MS becomes a real thing. So that's another issue. So, you know, uh, laying that concrete. And here's a little video about the concrete, the final part where I laid it. Wish I was better at doing it, but here's that video. Oh, base coat done. I'll have to put on a leveling coat for tile. Once you get that heat exhaustion, you're just unable to do anything hardly. Uh, I could take care of animals. If we had animals, I could still go up and feed them. You know, in the cool of the morning, the heat, in the late of the cool of the evening. I could still do that. Uh, so that's not a thing. But with if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, uh, multiple sclerosis, any number of these uh, autoimmune diseases, lupus, uh, you're going to have to find out your triggers, what makes your disease worse, and what makes it better. Uh, I discovered that with my disease, when I was a college administrator, the stress of that job caused me to have more lesions on the brain. Uh, Any time that I was the director and they checked the lesions of the brain, I would have 13 or 14 active lesions. Well, I quit the administrative position and uh, asked, my, asked the uh, college president if I could just become just a faculty member again. And I went back to just teaching and my lesion load went down to about six. Well, Still, that was six active lesions in any one time that they did an MRI. Since I've come to the farm, I have between one and three lesions, active lesions on MRI. Removing the stress has made it to where my life might be a little better and I, my prognosis might be a little better. 
Now, why did I leave work? I didn't leave work because my legs were, I was unable to stand and teach and that stuff. I didn't leave work because of that, because I was still able to do that. Because most of the things, teaching as a faculty member, you're in an air-conditioned spot, so it was never above 85 degrees. It was never, so I didn't have a problem with that. But what you'll notice in my videos as I do them, uh, I have uh, a problem where you hear me say, uh, a lot. That's something, that's caused by something called cognitive fog or cog fog. What that is, is uh, where the lesions have been on the center, the different places in my brain. Sometimes I have a hard time coming up with a word. Or I will forget what I'm saying in the middle of a sentence. Uh, that's hard when you're a teacher and you need to remember words like thermodynamics, Bernoulli. You know, you've got to know all of these scientific terms and you're lecturing. And you're lecturing about the first law of thermodynamics, but you're sitting there going, it's the first law of something. I don't know what it is you can see that you may not be a very effective instructor anymore. And that's the reason I retired. Uh, the chickens, they don't care if I can't remember a word. Crystal doesn't care. The tomato plants, they don't care. So coming to the homestead, it allowed my life to slow down. Uh, the food that we eat, uh, we've always raised a garden. Uh, Mom and Dad have always raised a garden. My grandparents. Uh, I remember my grandmother. She was 70 years old. Mom's, my mother's mother. And she always wanted to work in the garden. Of course, we all gardened together. We lived on the same plot of ground. And she always wanted to garden. So when she gardened, she went out at 6 a.m. in the morning. Well, she had a heart condition. And uh, she couldn't take the heat either. So she'd go out at 6 a.m. in the morning just as daylight was coming and it was 60 degrees outside and work in her garden. Well, I have to do the same thing. When it's getting up to 80 degrees, and it's supposed to be 80 degrees at 9 o'clock and it's 9.05, so when it starts getting up close to 80 degrees, I go into the air conditioning. Now, could I do off-grid? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I would bet that if I did off-grid, I would have to have a, a basement or some place that I could go to get cool uh, or else when it gets up to the heat of summer, I'd just be burnt. So as far as off-gridding, no, I'm modern homesteading and that's enough for me. It's basically just an Appalachian lifestyle. You know, people in central Appalachia here in Kentucky have, have gardened and raised animals and that was just a way of life for them. They worked at their regular job, and then they had animals and gardens and big families. Of course, I only've got two boys. Uh, I'm all the time trying to hide my disease. I catch myself doing that. I don't want people to uh, see me and maybe say, oh, that poor fella. You know, I just don't want that. Uh, I hide it. Well, I hide it from my family. I hide it from strangers. Uh, like this week, I'm, I'm having a considerable amount of pain. So I'm going to go to a chiropractor and see if he can help me with that pain without uh, going the drug route. I really don't want to go the drug route to help with pain. But uh, I have considerable leg pain. I mean considerable. It makes it hard to sleep at night. So, so it's easy for me to get up early in the morning and uh, get out in the garden before daylight because it wakes me up. But uh, if you've got a, a disease like this, you can do this. You just have to know your limitations. Learn what your limitations are and stick within them. Uh, my neurologist called me the king of lifestyle change. Well, yeah, I'm the king of lifestyle change, but I've had to be. But that's okay. I love the lifestyle I'm leading. And uh, you can lead it too if you have a disease. You just have to know what you can and can't do. Uh, 
the reason I haven't gotten animals yet, big animals, I've got chickens, but I haven't gotten big animals yet, goats and sheep and, and maybe a family milk cow, is because I needed to get everything done in this old farmhouse. We've been renovating this house for four years. And I needed to get everything done here because I knew that there would be projects here in the house that would take me away from my ability to do things outside. So I've concentrated on the house. Hopefully this bathroom project and the out turning one of our porches into an outdoor kitchen uh, for canning, a canning kitchen, will kind of free me up. I've still got the eaves to paint, but I'm debating I, ladders are something I have a hard time with because I can't feel my feet, and you have to look down and see where your feet are to use a ladder. So that can be kind of problematic. So I probably may have to hire my eaves painted. I've painted everything else on the house, on the exterior. I've got some exterior work to do still, uh, but hopefully I can just move along and get that stuff as it comes because you just have to pace yourself. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Your homestead is a marathon. Whether you've got a disease, don't have a disease, whatever, your homestead's a marathon. And don't let anybody take your joy. Nobody. You know, enjoy your life, enjoy your family, because tomorrow you may not have that. So you need to pay attention to yourself, to your health, do what you have to do. Also pay attention to what you can and can't do. And uh, But you can't let the bastard win. I'm not going to let my disease define who I am. You can't do that. Because once you do that, you give in. Well, you know, when you're down and you can't walk, and I understand that it might be easy to give in. But I hope I don't ever get to that point. About 50% of the people with multiple sclerosis wind up in a wheelchair. Maybe 25%. A lot of them wind up using a cane, which I've had to use a cane a few times. But you can't let it define you. If you've got MS or you've got rheumatoid arthritis or you've got lupus or any of those autoimmune diseases and you want a homestead, go for it. Because I'm telling you, you've only got one life. You're going to die anyway. You just as well as to do what you want to do. As long as you can do that, do it. So that's where I'm going to leave this. Now, if you like this homesteading kind of stuff, this do-it-yourself uh, independence, be sure to come out to the channel. Hit the subscribe button down here on the little right-hand side. It'll take you to our channel where you can subscribe. You can also go to our Facebook page. We put things on the Facebook page ever so often about things that we're doing and, and things like that. So uh, we upload videos about once a week, every Sunday. We try and get some kind of content out, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. But now it's time for me to get on to the next thing and out of this heat.